Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to see how we can actually handle and work with JSON in Swift using Codable to send data and receive it in Swift UI. So if you want to learn more about what a REST API is and JSON then check out my free course Swift UI iOS take home test which actually covers and breaks down what a REST API is and JSON as well. So let's get straight into this video. So in our previous video, we mentioned how JSON allows us to get data back or send it to some kind of service so we can handle data dynamically in our app. So how do we actually do this? Well, in iOS development, there's a protocol that you can actually use called Codable. So if we just go into the Apple documentation to see what this is, well, Codable is actually a type alias or an alias for both encodable and decodable. And what Codable allows us to do is actually gain the functionality of both of them so we can actually transform our object into a JSON representation or we can transform our data into a JSON representation. So if you actually look at the documentation here, you'll actually see that it has that type alias and we can access both the capabilities of Decodable, which like I said before, turns data into JSON and Encodable, which actually writes an object into JSON format. So what we're going to do is actually see how we can use both of these in our apps by actually playing with this in a Swift playground first to see how it works. So let's go into Xcode and we're just going to create a new playground and we're just going to create a blank playground. So you just hit next. Now you can call this whatever you want. Um, I'm going to call it my playground because I'm being laser. <laughs> so what we're going to do is expand this and within our playground we want to create a new file within here called data.json this is the file that we're going to use as our data source of json so let's go into resources and then let's just create a new file and then we're just going to call it like i said data.json okay cool So within this file, what we're going to do is just simply create a single JSON object that includes a username and a occupation. So let's do that now. So you can see that we've got a single JSON object here. We specified our keys. So our first key here is username and that has a value of tons dev. And our second key here is occupation and that has a value of content creator, which is great. So now that we have a very simple JSON file, you'll notice something. So since we're actually working with JSON, we don't actually have any type of linting within this file to tell us if what we've done is wrong. So to actually help us prevent this, what we should do after we type out any of our own custom JSON is actually use a validator online to make sure that what we're actually typing is valid. So the one we're going to use is this website called JSON Online Validator and Formatter or JSON Lim. And what this will allow us to do is simply just validate that our JSON is fine. So let's just actually just open this up. And then what you want to do is just copy your JSON. And then in this, so on this website here, you'll see this box. And what you can do is just paste in your JSON like so. And if you click validate JSON, it will tell you whether your JSON is valid or not. Now, just to show you that this definitely works, if I actually take out the comma and actually hit validate JSON, you'll see that it will now highlight and tell me that this line is actually invalid. So it will tell us that, you know, you've got a problem here. So you want to make sure that whenever you type out your own JSON, that you always run it against a linter like this to make sure that what you've got is working so that you don't like tear your hair out later wondering why your app isn't decoding the JSON properly. So now that we've actually got our JSON file, what we need to do now is actually model our data. So let's go back into our X, to our playground. And we'll actually need to create some kind of model so that we can actually, you know, convert and actually hold this JSON within our Swift code. So let's go back into our playground. What we're actually going to do is actually use a strut. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a class as well. But the reason why I'm actually using a strut over a class is because we actually don't need this to be a reference to, you know, any different parts of our code. All this is is just going to a simple object that holds some simple data. So we actually don't need to create a bunch of references within our application. So when you're actually working with, you know, models and whatnot in Swift, nine times out of 10, you actually want to start off with a struct. And then if you realize that I actually need to share this data across multiple places, then you want to turn it into a class. And if you actually want to learn more about the differences between structs and classes, then check out my video in the Swift UI sessions playlist that breaks this down. Next, let's actually create our model now and actually type this out by creating our struct. So what I just want to do as well is I actually want to just get the JSON that we have before and just put it side by side so you can just see that. 
So one thing you'll realize with our model, if you actually look at them both, is the properties within our JSON file actually match and are the exact same. So you can see that username is the exact same, spelt the same case in, and also the type here is string. If you look at occupation, it's also the same as well, where it has the exact same, you know, case and spelling, and it's a type string. Now, one more thing that I've also done as well is I've actually marked these as constants. Now, the reason why these are constants and not vars, so, you know, variables, is because we actually don't want to give someone the capability to actually change these values. We just want these properties to reflect the data that we get back from a service. Now, if we were to make this a var, someone can actually modify and change and mutate this model, which is what we don't want. All we want is the model to reflect the data that it gets back from the service. So by making them a constant, these values cannot change. Now, in order to actually read out and represent our data from our JSON file, we're going to actually need to use the codable type alias that we actually specified before. Now, what you could do if you wanted to, is you actually could mark these as decodable and encodable. But because we're going to be using both of them in this example, I'm just going to mark them out as codable. Cool. So now what this means is we can actually convert our data to JSON. Pause. What this means, what this means is we can actually convert our JSON data to and map it to this model. So we'll actually get it, you know, a user object that maps and puts these values within this object here. Or we could actually flatten and convert this user object into this JSON. So because we're actually working within a playground and we're not in an Xcode project, what we're going to need to do is actually get the actual file, so this actual data file from this resources folder and load it up so we can actually perform and actually, you know, convert and work with the JSON data. So what I'm going to do is actually just type this out and then we'll break it down. So the first thing we do is we say within this playground bundle, what we want to do is we want to get the file called data. So we want to get this file and it's of type JSON, so it's data.json file, so this file here. And then what we say from this function, it returns us the path to this file. And then what we say is we want to get the user file manager to actually get the content of this file and store it within this constant here. Now, what we're going to do is actually just run this and then just see if it actually prints to the console. So let's do this now. Cool. So now you can see that it actually prints out because it's actually able to get the data from that file. Now, if I was to actually print this data to the console, it would just basically look like a bunch of like codes and you wouldn't actually be able to understand what any of it meant. So the next thing we're going to do is actually decode this data and actually map it to our model. So let's do that now. So what we want to do is actually use the contents of the file and map it to our model so we can use it in our app. Now, in order to actually do this, we need to use a class called JSON Decoder. And if you actually go to the Apple documentation for JSON Decoder, you'll see an example of this here where rather than using an actual, you know, file like we've done, it's actually just got the string in line within the code and converts it to data. And you can see that it actually maps it to the model here, grocery product. So we need to copy this essentially within our code. So let's do that now. So in here, what we want to do is actually create an instance of JSON decoder. So rather than printing, we'll say let decoder is equal to JSON decoder, like so. And then after this, what we're going to say here is we're going to store this within a property called users. And then we're going to say try decoder dot decode. And then we need to put the type in here. So the type that we want to map this to is user. So the reason why we use user here dot self is because we want to say here is that get the data and map it to this type, which is just a single user, which is what our JSON object represents. Now the from here is the data. So in here we want to pass in the data, which we got from the file manager. So let's pass that in here. Cool. So one thing you'll realize here is that we actually have something called a try. So this try, just basically means that this decode could actually fail. It's actually possible for us to pass in JSON that actually doesn't match the model that we're telling it to map it to. So let's actually just dump this to the console. Cool. So now let's actually just run this. Sweet. Now if you actually look in the console, you'll now see that it actually maps and reads from our file and prints out the username, tons dev, and content creator. So now we have a user object at this point 
that maps the data from our JSON file. So this is great, but what I actually want to do is show you what happens if there actually is a mismatch in the data or in the structure, like I said before. So let's say, for example, if the name of a parameter in your JSON changed, or there's properties that have been removed in your JSON, or you just got a completely different structure. Let's actually see what happens. So this time, let's actually go into our data. And rather than us having a single object, we'll actually add in an array of users. So we'll just copy, we'll just cut this, and then we'll create the square brackets. And then we'll just simply just paste in our JSON like so, and then we'll use a comma to separate the two. And then for our username this time, we're going to update this to be something like Bill, and then we'll change the occupation here to be something like, I don't know, Ice Cream Man. Cool. So now our data that we have in our JSON file doesn't match the structure that we've told the decoder to map it to here. Because we're saying here we want this to be a single user. So it's just one single user object. But now in our JSON file, we actually have an array of users. So before we actually do this, let's actually just run this through our lint to make sure that this JSON here is valid. So let's just copy this JSON file. And then let's just paste it. And then we'll hit validate JSON. And you can see that the JSON is valid. Cool. So now let's go back into our playground. And now let's actually run this and see what happens. So if we actually run this now, you'll see that we actually get an error. If you actually look at the console, it's telling us here that it actually expected us to pass in an array. So it, tell, it expects us to actually tell it that it's actually now an array of users rather than it being a single user. So you can see here that the decoder actually tells you when there was a mismatch in your data. So in order to fix this, what we want to do this time is actually tell our decoder that we don't want a single user, we actually want an array of users. And we can do that by simply just adding the square brackets before and after our type here. So now we're saying that we want it to decode it to an array of users. So let's hit play. I can now see that actually dumps our array of users. So now we have two elements in the array. So we have tons dev content creator and we also have Bill who's an ice cream man. Cool. So we actually thought we can use the JSON decoder to read data from a file and actually convert it to map it to our model. But what we want to do now is actually see how we can do the opposite of this where we can actually transform a codable object back into data so we can actually use this wherever we want. So we may possibly want to save this data to a database. We may want to add it to a request body or I don't know, do something with it later, such as, you know, maybe saving it to a file. Now in this course, what we're going to do is we're actually going to see two examples of this where we actually convert data back from a response and we actually convert a model to data so we can send it in a request such as a post request. Now we can actually achieve this where we actually convert our model back into data by using the encodable protocol which you get for free with Codable. And in order to actually do this, just like there's JSON decoder, we can actually use an object called JSON encoder. Now let's actually look at how we can actually turn our array of users back into data using the JSON encoder this time. So after our dump of users here, we're going to type out, well, first of all, let's actually just clean this up. Okay, cool. So we're going to type out, let encoder, and then we're going to say JSON encoder, like so. And then now what we want to do is actually store the encoder's return value for when it converts our model back into data. So let's create a property here called let data. And then we're going to say try. And then we're going to say encoder.encode. And as you can see, the encode function doesn't need you to declare a type. It just needs you to just pass it in an object that conforms to encodable, which is what our user object does. So now we can just say here, user. But well, what we should say here is users because it's now an array of users. It's not just a single user. So users. So this is now going to encode our users to data. So now what we were able to do is actually call dump here and we can actually dump our data to the console. So let's actually run this and see what happens. 
So as you can see, like I said before, we can see our data, but it's actually looking, you know, our data. So it's actually being printed out as the count size or the size of our data. So if we actually want to see what this looks like in terms of like an actual, you know, JSON. Then we can use the string object to actually convert our data into a JSON string like encoding. So let's do that now. So what we want to do is type out string. And then within here, we want to choose the option where you can actually pass in data like so. So we've got passing our data. And then the encoding that we want to use is UTF-8. Cool. So now if we actually run this, you'll see that we're actually able to view our data as the JSON string that will be sent within you know, our request and whatnot. So you can see here that when we look at this line, which is showing us the value of our you know, data, our username here, uh, job, I can see the username as well and the occup occupation. So this looks all good. So as you can see, this is just a very basic example of us using Codable to help us transform JSON in our apps. In the next video, we'll actually look at how we can handle more complex JSON objects since in your development career, you're more than likely going to have to work with big data sets that include different types of data. So if you actually enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.